Welcome back to Autophone, Alex Sicarga here and today I'm going to be talking about spark plugs for the Dodge Neon S34. First I'm going to talk about the spark plug type. They are copper nickel spark plugs like the ones I have here. These are the ones that are recommended by the factory for the Dodge Neon and they are the LCTR5. A-13. I'll put a link in the description to all the items that you see displayed here if you're interested on those. These are basic uh, copper plugs and copper plugs are really friendly for boost. So they are used in a lot of cars that have boost applications or turbos or superchargers are very friendly to that. But copper doesn't last very long. Copper has a limited life so these spark plugs are probably going to be uh, done in about 10,000 miles. But I see that as an advantage. Why? Because because I change my spark plugs every other oil change. See, if I do my oil, change, oil changes at 5,000 plug, at 5,000 miles, I'll change the spark plugs at 10,000 miles. I like that because I'm always having a new literally a brand new set of spark plugs installed in my engine and these things are so inexpensive they're about two or three dollars a pop and you only need four so it is very cheap to constantly have brand new spark plugs in the car and that allows me to look at the spark plug every time to see if there's anything going on with it also allows me to remove it and ensure that it hasn't seized up there are other type of spark plugs with the more exotic materials such as the Iridium spark plugs and the Iridium spark plugs are going to potentially be rated all the way between 30,000 to 50,000 miles in between intervals. Now that's really neat in terms that it saves me time of having to change them out. But again, I don't I don't like to keep a, a spark plug, an old spark plug for a long time versus copper. Now these ones are for stock applications. When you have a stock application, the gap in here, the spacing between the electric and the tip is going to be of size 0.050. So these spark plugs already come pre-gap. So all I have to do is insert them into the engine and call it a day. It is always good practice to verify the gap of the spark plug before you put it in their air engine just to make sure nothing has changed. And NGK talks about this and there are a couple ways to do it. One way to check the gap in spark plugs is to use filter gauges and these are just li literally pieces of metal of different thicknesses that will be inserted in here to see if the gap is correct. The other type is this one right here which is the wire type. The wire types are round and they're different sizes so I would find the size of the gap that I want and I would insert that to confirm if the gap is correct or not. This one's the most common which is the dial one. The dial one is inserted in here and I would turn it until it stops very gently. And yeah, sure enough, this one is gapped at the stock size of 0.050. So this is one of my favorite ones. However, even though this is my favorite one, NGK recommends the use of the wire one. And the wire one is very gentle because it's a wire, so it's a round surface. It's not gonna scrape the tip. And on a copper one like this, copper nickel, the tip is not that sensitive, but on an iridium one, I probably will not be inserting this inside of an iridium one. Uh, it's just so gentle that I would not want to touch it. But this one on an iridium one, I will definitely feel comfortable. Now, how do I adjust the gap on the spark plug? There are a couple ways to do it. With the dial one, after checking what the size is, let's say I want to open the spark plug gap, I would insert the tool into here and I would start to pry up. I'm going to remove it here so to demonstrate that. I will pry up like that, like if I was opening a bottle. So by prying up here, I'm putting pressure on the tip. Well, not, not this tip right here, on this outside portion. And I'm, I'm leaving the tip totally untouched, unmolested. <laughs> so if I lift this, it is safe to adjust the gap. However, this tool does not allow me to close the gap. Normally to close the gap, you would tap the spark plug into a surface or you would just put pressure on it. This is where I find that the wire tool has a tremendous advantage because the wire tool has a built-in little clips that you can use for adjustment. So if I wanted to open up the gap, I just insert the tool into here. And the same process, I pull on it, I'm gonna remove it. I will pull on it to open it or I will push on it to close it. So I have full control of open and close with this tool where this one only allows me to open up the gap. Obviously with the Filler gauges, there is no, no, no way. This is just for measuring, man. Uh, but I like this ones because I can control the gap. Also, let's talk about the gap before we go on. The gap, how big should it be? While the stock one is a good size, as the 
boosts get higher as your modifications get more and more uh, extreme uh, the spark plug typically gap is reduced uh, so the gap imagine it as the go higher boost should be smaller as there's less boost it should be larger now however the recommendation of most racers or most people who use this for performance application is to go with the largest gap possible before there's an issue with the engine. And this is probably why the stock size is 0.050 because 050 gives you probably the best mileage and the best performance. However, some cars are sensitive to that. So there are actually cars all stock running smaller than 0.050 and running it smaller than 0.050 just as a safety measure. But some cars do see a little bit of loss in power by reducing the gap. So the recommendation is to always run the largest gap as possible before there is any kind of engine issue such as deton detonation or spark blowout. All right, so now let's move on to installing the spark plugs. This is the front part that's gonna go into the car and there are obviously treads and uh, you're gonna be treading them into an engine and it's gonna be there for a long time, subject to heat. So there's a possibility the spark plug may cease on there and next time I try to go remove it, it's gonna get stuck in there. So typically people have used anti-seize lubricant on here to keep the spark plug from getting stuck in that place. However, using anti-seize lubricant can have two negative effects. One of them is that, first of all, it acts as a lubricant. So I'm supposed to tighten the spark plugs to a specific tightness, which is called torque. If I add the lubricant on there, I'm gonna be able to tighten it more than I should have. So I can potentially over tighten my spark plugs because this will throw off the reading of the torque. So that's the reason why I don't use anti-seize lubricant. The other reason I don't use anti-seize lubricant is if there is too much anti-seize on here, this stuff is gonna start to gum up and potentially act the opposite. It will cause the spark plug to seize because now you got a lot of gunk caught up in the anti-seize material. So if anybody's using this, the recommendation has been to always use as little as possible. I do love that the NJK uh, spark plugs have a special plating that they describe as anti-seize. So that means that they actually recommend that no anti-seize should be used. And that's exactly how I put them into my engine and I have been swapping them out without no issue. Now, what about this guy right here? This one, I do use this one religiously. And basically this is a grease that's applied on the upper portion right here. And it's called dielectric grease. And I apply it on the body and on this area right here. And that's gonna keep the boot right here, this is the wire, from getting stuck. Sometimes because of the heat, the uh, plastic can become stuck to the ceramic. So by putting this dielectric grease, it allows me to always ensure that, whoop, I'm not gonna have any trouble, whoop, removing that guy out. Yeah, I have also heard that it helps with any kind of arcing that may happen between here and the contacts internally. I'm not sure how effective that is, but it just makes me feel good. And again, the uh, guide in here will be to be very gentle or very light on the application. I wouldn't want to just smear it on. It's just a very light application before installation. All right, so now, now that we're done looking at this here on the desk, now let's go look at how it looks in the car. I like to start by cleaning this area with compressed air. This will ensure that nothing's gonna fall in once I remove the spark plug wires. Carefully, I remove each spark plug wire. And what I'm doing, I'm pulling on the grommet, not the wire. To remove the spark plugs, I use a special spark plug socket. There we go, nice and easy. As I take the spark plugs out, I'll line them up so I'll know where they came from. This is important because I'm gonna inspect them. If there is an issue, I'll know exactly what cylinder has the issue. I put a link on the description below on a nice little video that shows you the different things that can be observed when you are inspecting spark plugs and what they mean. Before installing the new ones, I'm going to apply a little bit of dielectric grease on the ceramic body and the back portion of it. Just a very slight thin application. 
using the same special socket, I'm gonna first hand thread the spark plug. This is gonna make sure I don't cross thread anything. Now I can finally use the tool. I'm only gonna snug the spark plug since I'm gonna be torquing them later. I'll repeat the same process for each one of the spark plugs. Always important to start by hand before using any tools. Now I'm going to torque the spark plugs to factory spec. The spec is 13 pounds plus or minus 2, so I could go as high as 15 or as low as 11 pounds and it should be okay. Before putting the spark plug wires back on, I'm going to put a little bit of dielectric grease inside of them. This is going to ensure again that the body of the spark plug is not going to get melted or stuck to the boot later on. Now time to push these guys back in. There is almost a little snap motion to them, so I feel them click and that's how I know that they are fully engaged. So I have to press down very, very firmly and then it pops in place. Let me know in the comments what your favorite spark plug is. I got more SRT4 videos coming up, so be sure to subscribe, like the video and share it with your other SRT4 buddies, and we'll see you guys on the next one.